My name is Rick Martinez. I'm 72 years old. Thus far, my life has been an incredible journey. I grew up in a small town, Palmdale, California. For a few months, uh, when I was 14, I entered the seminary. I thought that I was going to be a monk. Uh, I was going to church every day from the time I was five years old. And I thought that's what God wanted me to do. Uh, after the a few months in the seminary, a priest told me that I needed to go back to high school and experience life. It was a hard hit. I had tears coming down my face. I, I asked God, what do you want me to do now? I thought this was my dream, you know, my, my, my life. This was actually one of my first biggest um, rejections, my first trauma, you know. Uh, at the age of 17, I, uh, I joined the Marine Corps, wanted to serve my country. Uh, a year later, I ended up in combat zone in Vietnam. That's when I experienced what life was all about. I had a friend die in my arms. I helped another friend desert. I saw too many people die, and I was just a kid. When I was 19, it was all over. I was done with two tours in Vietnam. I asked myself, what now? I was lonely, found a pretty girl, and married with my eyes, not my heart. We got married in June of 71. We lost our first child by miscarriage um, six months later. Even though I was 21, I felt like I was 90 years old. I, I lived 10, year, 10 lifetimes in, in Vietnam. Uh, we lost our second child on Easter Sunday. Looking back on it, I, I really feel that it, this was Agent Orange related. Um, I was in areas that were heavily sprayed. Um, and I was so traumatized from the Vietnam experience. I couldn't talk to my wife. I couldn't hold her. Couldn't tell her how sorry I was when we lost our children. I didn't know what PTSD was at was at that time and I had put up a wall um, we got the marriage annulled she went her way I went mine I got married again five years later had two beautiful children um, about five years after that my my daughter was five my son was three and my wife found some guy that was tall dark and handsome took my children and left I was making about $600 a week, and that wasn't enough for her. I couldn't give her success. I couldn't get close to her. I, I just, I still didn't know that I, at that time, that I had severe PTSD. I was afraid to get close to people. Something inside me, you get close to people, they die. You get close to people, they die. And then finally, you put up this wall. Several years later, I remember waking up at 7 a.m. with pain all over my body, off the chart pain, agony pain. My muscles had gone lax after my years in combat, and I remember thinking many times, I wish someone would just put a gun to my head and take me out. I would, uh, I would barely make it to the shower. I, I mean, I look like a 90-year-old man. I'd get to the shower, turn on the hot, hot water, steam everywhere. After a 30-minute shower, I would go to the kitchen, make a bowl of top ramen soup, and uh, get my TV tray and watch Andy Griffiths, Leave it to Beaver. And by 8.30 that morning, I would crawl back into my bed and by 9 a.m. that same morning, I'd be sound asleep. I would not wake up until 7 a.m. the following morning. 22 hours of sleeping my, way, my life away for nine months. 
After the nine, ninth month, my brother came into the room. I was just re getting ready to nod off, you know. Uh, he opens up the door and he says, Rick, what about the VA? And I said, what about it? That's for people that are sick and dying. He said, well, and then it hit me. I, I looked at him and said, okay, take me to the VA. He took me to the VA the following day. When I arrived at the VA, the doctor asked me why I was there. I said, I didn't really know. My brother thought, my brother and my mom thought it would be a good idea that I come here. And so what have you been going through? And I shared the story with him. And he says, uh, did you go to Vietnam? And I said, yeah. He said, well, you have a severe case of PTSD. And I said, PTS what? post-traumatic stress and he said we want to help you son we want to keep you here and I I said okay I'm okay with that I you know, I was in a very toxic environment I need help I need help they were giving me um, anxiety anxiety medications all, anxiety I mean all kinds of medications and I was in there uh, a lot of therapy uh, a lot of medications and a whole lot of flooding I really never cried so much in all my life uh, they just they brought it up they wanted to know everything I was going through in my life and and Vietnam kept on popping up and popping up and every time I got to the Vietnam I just lost it God. Uh, the government was having cutbacks. They started um, closing a lot of parts of the VA. A lot of the nurses and doctors that I got to close to were getting laid off. After the fifth month of uh, being an inpatient at the VA, I was discharged and they handed me a grocery bag, a paper grocery bag full of medications and I'm sure I had probably over $5,000 worth of narcotics and sleeping pills and anxiety pills worth of medications in there. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do now? And they gave me a list of um, my doctor's appointments. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I wasn't going back to where I was or who I was. That was, that was toxic. And... Um, uh, that was like slow mo. I realized then that would have been like slow motion suicide. So all I could do is I went up to the golf course, uh, the VA golf course. I sit. I was sitting on the fourth hole of the VA uh, golf course and watched the sunset. And then I laid back down and I'm watching the moon come up and stars in the sky and fell asleep. Woke up about five in the morning and started walking around carrying my paper bag full of true medication and I'm like what now that started my four-year journey as a homeless veteran in the streets of Los Angeles uh, I was in my early 30s after 1988 my sister called me up asked me if I wanted to help her and her husband with a new air freight company they were starting we started with one tiny office about this size, uh, one small desk and one phone and a map of Los Angeles on the wall. And after four, and one 26 foot bobtail truck. My brother-in-law was driving the truck. My sister and I were working in the office, handing the phone back and forth to each other. And um, Five years later, four years later, we had 150 employees working for us. We had 45 bobtail trucks, and, and uh, uh, we had built a $5 million enterprise. We had a big contract with the Department of Defense during Operation Desert Storm. I was on top of the world. I hung my Marine Corps flag in the back of my truck and I'm transporting laser guidance systems for the Department of Defense. Civilian support for Operation Desert Storm. 
I was on top of the world making $5,000 a week, 20 hour days. And I got home one day, took my shower, the TV was on and I was watching those, the footage of those uh, jets flying over the enemy and the little crosshairs and then all of a sudden big explosion and life gone killings and, and then I was part of a killing machine I was transporting those laser guidance systems and it took me right back to Vietnam I, I lost it and uh, ended up back in the and back in the veterans hospital I, I, I just I snapped P severe PTSD I ended up going to a special group for combat veterans uh, up in Palo Alto, California to try to get more help and uh, I got married for the third time in 1990 and that's when my life started getting a little bit better. That year I started a Veterans for America a nonprofit organization. When the VA kicked me out of the hospital because of the layoffs and other veterans, um, I had formed relationships with a lot of veterans, but uh, in a matter of two years time, I lost seven real close uh, Vietnam veterans, homeless Vietnam veterans that took their own lives. I remember uh, waking up one night at three o'clock in the morning when I was in the VA hospital and I had this vision for a veteran organization and then there it was Veterans for America veterans helping veterans if if anyone can stop this homelessness and the suicides it's the veterans working together helping other veterans we're the only ones that understand what's going on I started focusing on helping other people instead of my pain, my suffering, my problems, and um, I started helping others. So ever since then, I've been on a mission to save lives and make this world a better place. I still have not made it to the to the Vietnam Wall in Washington, D.C. I'd get close, and all of a sudden, I'd just back away. I've got ghosts around me. <coughs> Sometimes I feel like there's no healing. I try, I try and I try. I meditate at least five hours a day. I pray morning and night. I give thanks to God for, for my day and I give thanks to God for everything. Small things, big things, everything in between. I'm living an attitude of gratitude. I have my tools, I have aromatherapy, my Tai Chi, my meditation, my waterfalls. I'm doing everything. Uh, I still have the adrenaline going through my system. I'm still in the combat mode. I'm still doing perimeter watches. At two or three o'clock in the morning, I get out of bed and I'm doing a, doing a perimeter watch around my house. And there's a saying, you can take the soldier out of the war, but you can't take the war out of the soldier. I'd love to find a solution. I realize it's a full-time job. It's something that we have to work for, and we have to maintain hope. We have to keep, keep our eye on God and, and, and hang on to, to being positive and in my opinion, I look back on it now, and my reward has been from helping others, serving others. I think that's what life is all about. It's not about me. My pain, my suffering, what I've been through, that's nothing. So, I try to shut it off, but it can't. I, I, I don't believe in the word can't, but this has been going on for years and years and years. My fight, flight, or flight mode has been there ever since I was a nun. And I still think to myself, how do I fill this empty hole inside of me? 
how do I how do I feel how do I feel the loss from 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 my friends Just how do you feel that hole so by the grace of God I'm I'm still here so this is my miracle That's my story.